Okay, so hopefully you've had time to go through and circle the words that are correct. And I would say just compare your work right now to what I've got on here. Again, I'm circling only the words that I'm scoring as correct. Pause the video to take a look at how our two scorings compare and then we'll talk about it in a minute. Okay, let me talk about a couple of common uh, confusions. So in the word map, this is the word map, and he has all the letters for map, but when he adds the E, that changes this word. So you can't count this word as correct. Um, as it is, it is not the word map. Um, as we go down here, I counted slid correct with, an, with a C. Now here's one tricky aspect of this work. If the child is representing a sound with a letter that sometimes makes that sound, we give them the benefit of the doubt. This test is about can the child hear and record sounds. So in slid, a C often makes that s sound. And so I think in this one, I would give him the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, as we're going down here, grab, we have some reversed letters, but the reversed G and the reversed capital B do not become other letters. Now it's interesting that he's using this capital B multiple times, and that often is, is when a child's not sure how to form the lowercase, they might use the uppercase. So that would be something we would want to teach Jake. Uh, we've got chop fast, went, win, fed, trip, rub. Now the trick here is that B, when he reverses it, becomes a letter D, so we can't count that one. So all together, I'm counting these, I have 17, and we call that your stage score. The child has scored 17 words correctly. So what does that mean? Well, if the child had scored um, really high on this test, so maybe they've um, spelled 25 of these words correctly. On page 37 in your forms pack, um, it gives you a range to consider. You know, if the child is scored between 22 and 25, um, that means that they really understand that stage. And if they're between 12 and 21, it means, you know, that's, that's where they're working right now. They're learning the features in that stage. Um, if the child scored below 12 on a stage, then that indicates that this stage might be too hard for the child. And if you started, let's say, on the within word test, feature test, and you got a score below 12, that would tell you to go down to the lower level test. So within word comes after letter name. So if you had a child score low on the within word test, Gans is telling you, go back down a level and see what they can do on that lower level. Our student, Jake, scored in this area here, and so it means that this is probably the stage that they're working on. We're pretty much done with this test. We'll just analyze the data that we have on the letter name stage feature test. If the child, however, scored 22 to 25, that means they're almost done with the stage that you're looking at. And so if you had a student that scored 23 on the letter name stage test, you would give them the one higher test. So you would go from the letter name stage feature test to the within word stage feature test. And in your forms, you have a feature list for letter name. That's the one we were working with. But you also have a feature list for within word, syllable juncture, and derivational constancy. So you have all of those. All right. So we have determined that we are at the right place for Jake. He is probably a letter name stage speller. Now, as we saw with the um, in inventory, the screening inventory, sometimes kids can show us that they know important parts of a word, even though they don't have the whole word spelled correctly. So in the word jet, Jake is showing us he knows this, which is the initial consonant and he knows the final consonant, j-et. 
he doesn't quite understand what happens when you hang a silent E on the end of a word. Changed jet to jeet, unfortunately. So what Gansk is going to do is she's going to give us a, a way of looking at what the child has given us to determine if they're showing us some important features. So in your test form packet, you have a form that looks like this. DSA form A letter name answer card. Go find that. And once you've found this form, uh, unpause the video. So pause now, find the form. Okay. And come back. Here is Gansk's way of helping us see what the child knows about particular features. On the end of each line, you see a code. And these codes map onto, so here's a code that says, oh, D. And in this text, you'll see that there's one letter underlined right there. Right here, we're looking at C. And you have one letter underlined. What Gansk is going to do is she's going to ask us to look for this particular feature in the word. Each one of these features has a code. So if we're looking at C, we are looking for, I bet you can already tell, what's the E in bet? Short vowels, that's right. Now, if you forget, on this little scoring sheet, here we have the features. A is going to be consonants. B is going to be blends and digraphs in the beginning of words. C is short vowels. D is affricates. And E is blends and digraphs at the ends of words. Okay? So Gansk puts blends and digraphs together. And she's interested in are they able to hear and record them at the beginning of the word or the end of the word. Okay, so you have found your DSA form A for the letter name stage, the little code sheet. I've just folded mine back so it, it uh, is viewable under this document camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to now look at each word and we're going to search for just the feature that Gansk has listed. So here's the affricate, J. And you could say, Carrie, why is the J in jet considered an affricate and not a consonant? I'm not a linguist, so affricates are a little too complex for me to determine the sound difference. But we're going to take uh, Gansk's uh, expertise as a linguist on this. So we just look for the J. Is the J there? It is. So if the J is there, we're going to want to remember that. Here's how we're going to remember. The first step, what I want you to do is copy these codes, D, B, C, A, right here. Copy them over here on the ends of these lines. Okay, just like this. So what I want you to do now is just stop the video, copy these codes over onto the appropriate line all the way through. Be real careful, make sure you got the code right. When you're finished with that, push play again on the video. Okay, we're back. Now, we are going to use this code and the underlined example letter here to determine what we're looking for. We're looking for the J in jet, it's right there. If the child is showing you the feature, you're going to circle that code. So we know he's shown us one affricate. In ship, we're going to look for the SH. Now the trick is when you put a C with a CH, it doesn't make that sound. So we cannot circle that. In bet, we're looking for a short E. He has an E here. But when you hang the silent E on the end, that would turn this into a long E, beat. So we can't circle that. In got, he gives us a G. It's reversed. Can we count it? Yes, we can because it didn't become another letter. Cap, we're looking for the A. Is it there? Yes, it is. So I want you to pause the video and you're going to look for the feature that Gansk has on the answer sheet. And if it's there, then you circle it. When you finish both columns, come back and we'll take a look at what you have. Okay, I have gone through and I have used Gantz's coding sheet to determine if the child has that particular feature in the word. <clears throat> so take a look at what I've got. You might want to pause the video to, to check your work and then unpause when you're finished. 
Okay, there are a couple of places that people often have questions about. So one would be on number three. So on three again, remember we're looking for a short vowel E. C is the short vowel. And he has an E here, but when he put the extra E on the end, it becomes a long vowel, so we can't circle that. Um, as we go through here, another example we could look at is map. We're looking for the P, the P sound. And he has the P sound. When you put an E on the end of map, does it change the P sound? No, it does not. That's still going to make the P sound. So you could go ahead and circle that one. Again, sl in slid, that's a little tricky. That S does make, the C does make an S sound at times, and it doesn't change anything to be with that L. Um, and then on this side, these are pretty easy. You know, um, this is a great example of that affricate. He's hearing it, he just doesn't know how to write it. Um, so that's what I have so far. Now, as an aside, we know that there are some things here that aren't being evaluated that we would still want to pay attention to. This child is reversing some letters. Which letters do you see him reversing? G, capital B, C. And so, lowercase g as well. So these would be letters we would want to teach this child how to form. We would do that by giving him the starting position, a verbal pathway for forming that letter, having him form it on multiple planes, and name the letter every time he formed it. But that's a little different than what we're doing here. But you would just note any of those reversals and then think about teaching those. Those are really important. We don't want to ignore those. All right, in terms of phonics features, Gansk has designed this test so that there are five A's, five B's, five C's, and five D's, and five E's. So there are five possible features that we're looking for in each of these. So the next step is I want you to count the number of A's that this child has demonstrated. So we have one there, two, uh, three, four, five. So he has gotten five out of five on the initial consonants and um, final consonants. So he knows a lot about his consonants. Um, let's go through and find the totals for all of these. How many does the child get right? Pause your video, come back after you've filled in your form.